How often are you walking around telling everybody, yes, 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 yes. And then you go, oh my God, I'm so exhausted. I have no energy. I, I'm angry. I'm holding resentments. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. You got to stop saying yes to everybody else because you're saying no to you. So we want to flip that so you can say yes to yourself. And let me tell you, you don't even need the guilt behind it. So let's start saying no to others. Check it out. Hey, 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 everybody, and welcome back to the Positivity Experience. It's your girl, Lori, and woo, we are, where are we at? We're towards the end of, well, we're not quite at the end yet, but a week or so away from uh, August, and that means here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going to be going into fall, your girl's most favorite time of the year, which makes me so excited. Um, yeah, and it feels like the year is just zooming by, and we're going to talk about that because time goes by really, really fast. You don't realize it, and it doesn't go by as fast as a child, but as you get older, it starts going by really quickly, and you start going, man, I wanted to accomplish this. Man, I wanted to accomplish that, which we know is into goals and, and micro-goaling, but it's also saying no to things that you really don't want to uh, do without offering a big thesis. And that is what we have to talk about. And over on Patreon, which will follow this episode, um, is going to talk to you about some tips on how you can start start saying no to other people, along with a little worksheet that really helps you unbox things as you're doing your five journals. So if that's your jam, uh, feel free to jump over to patreon.com forward slash the positivity experience, or you can just click it anywhere that you're listening to this podcast right now. And it'll just kind of elevate more of what we're talking about here. I try to do that every single week. So you have a place to start, not just giving you the tools. So, but let's jump into that because, oh my goodness, there's so many reasons why you fear saying no to other people, right? And one of those big things is you're afraid of rejection, right? So you're afraid that if you say no to somebody, all of a the sudden they're going to be like, well, I'm mad at you. I'm never going to talk to you again. Well, here's the caveat to that. Here's the other side of that. If someone is going to just kind of disown you, for lack of a better word, or not speak to you anymore because you are holding a boundary that they don't like, then they're not really your people, right? They're really not. And so anytime that you're saying yes, now listen, of course, there are going to be things in your life that you're going to have to compromise on. You know, I'm pretty sure a lot of you would rather like win the lottery, sit on the beach somewhere, not have to worry about going to work, but you say that now. And I have some clients who can do that and they choose to not do that because they tried it and they're like, oh my gosh, this is, I feel like I have no life. I mean, they can do a lot of stuff. They can do the things that you and I would think would be fabulous, but that gets old, right? If all you could do, if you had all the money in the world and you could just travel and just do all those things, it would lose its its sort of luster. So yeah, you want to be in a space where you're not worried about finances, but don't think that finances are going to like fix everything. And this is important when it comes to work, right? Because, oh, can you take on this project? Sure. Hey, can you do this? Can can you stay late today? Absolutely. Now, meanwhile, those things are going to happen. There's going to be those times where, hey, man, let's be a team player here. That's fine. But that needs to be the exception, not the rule. Okay. Because if you're not solid, so here's like what you would say. You'd say, um, hold on, let me check my schedule. First of all, you never just say yes. You never respond yes immediately hey, let me check my schedule. I don't care if you have nothing on there because you may not want to work for that person. And that's plenty enough reason. But say you look and you're like, okay, there really is anything I have to do on a Tuesday. Sure, I'll pick up that shift for you. But you don't just say, I'll pick up that shift for you. Say, yeah, I think I can do that this time. Um, I'm not really sure about anything in the future, but I, I, can, I can cover for you today. So don't leave it open-ended. Like, oh my God, yeah. Because now you're going to create this sort of unwritten expectation that you're always going to be available. And while you do need the job because you have to have the money, do not be a prisoner to the job, right? Because I promise you, you get hit by a bus tomorrow, they'll be sad, they'll send flowers to your family, they'll say, oh my God, they were such a great worker, and then they're going to have to find somebody to take your position, okay? So I'm not asking you not to show up, I'm not asking you to just do bare minimum, but what I am saying is the more you go through fear of worrying about losing that job and saying no, you have a right to say no. Again, flexibility can be there, but that has to be a limited amount of time. And it has to have like, hey, I can do this this once, but then you have to hold on to that. 
Okay. Now, don't take the shift in expectation that somebody else is going to take the shift. You may ask them, they may say no. If you get your feelings hurt behind it, that's on you. Because if you're going to do something kind, you don't do something kind with that expectation in return, which is big in the reason as to why you say yes. Right? So a lot of times you might be like, well, yeah, I can do that. And it's, it maybe it's conscious, maybe it's subconscious, where you say to yourself, hmm, am I doing this because I want to put money in the bank? So like a favor in the bank, like, well, I did this for you. So I'm going to hold that over your head at some point. Don't forget four months from now, when I say I want to take the day off, or can, can you take this? You owe me one. Now, if you establish that ahead of time, like if the person says, hey, if you cover my shift, I will be happy to cover a shift for you in the future, then fine. So now we know what that is. But don't just assume that that's going to happen. So this is important with your yeses, because sometimes not just the people pleasing, we'll talk about that in a second, not just the people pleasing, but sometimes when you say yes to things, you're saying yes to things with almost um, an undertone of manipulation without meaning to, right? So you're like, yeah, I can mm -hmm. put that in my box. It's kind of like if you're not secure in a relationship and your partner says, hey, I'm going to go out with my friends tonight. And you go, that's fine, but I'm going out with my friends tomorrow. Like, why Why are we doing this? Like, go ahead, go out with your friends. If you want to go out tomorrow, that's fine. But don't do it because that other person did it. So this is where insecurities come into play. So sometimes outside of the, the common ones that we're going to talk about, like people pleasing, fear of rejection, all of these things, feeling of, of disappointment for, from people, there's other areas as to why you keep saying yes. Now, it's important that you understand that while flexibility is mandatory part of human beings, not at the risk of your peace, okay? No, I don't mean your peace of just let me sit in the house and watch Netflix all day. It's not what I mean. But if it's creating more stress for you, um, then don't do it, right? And that means that you're going to have to say no and no, period. No, I'm not available. We don't need a 47-page dictation on why you can't. Because now that's seeking the approval and validation. So a lot of times when you say yes to things, you're seeking someone to be like, oh my God, they're so sweet. Oh my God, I validate them. Like that's what you're doing. But the reality is, if you're saying yes to something all the time, you don't have any energy left for anything that you want to do. You know, you're like, well, it's okay. I mean, I'm putting all these people, mm -mm, do not do that. We are not going to sit there and keep putting all these people in front of you. It will breed resentment. Not might, it will. Might not be in that moment in time. Oh, but it will breed resentment because you're going to be like, I, I see this a lot in my practice. I was with this person for 12 years. I gave up all my hopes and dreams and I, I was there. And then that person cheated on me and I can't believe that. Okay, not saying that you deserve to be cheated on. Nobody said that. But what my, the very first part of that has to be addressed. I gave up my dreams and life for this person. Already a big red flag for me. If, if I could get my hands on you prior to doing that, I'd be like, no, no, no. You're not going to give up your dreams and desires for another human being. Because what will happen is, even if, let's say that fictitious, well, it's not really fictitious, but let's say in your case, it's a fictitious uh, scenario and the person doesn't cheat, you're still going to hold certain levels of resentment. Well, I guess it must be nice to go and play golf all day because I gave up my thing for you. Mm -mm, we're not going to do that. And this is why your boundaries must be there. So we know that approval and validation and the fear of rejection, right? So when you have this solid fear of rejection that comes into your space and you go, well, I don't want them to be mad at me. Well, now you're going to have to visit that why. Why is it that you don't want them to be mad at you? Because let me let you in on a little secret. People aren't always going to be happy when you establish a boundary. It's just not going to happen. They're not going to feel happy that you establish a boundary. They're not going to fall in love with the fact that you have this boundary. They're not going to love that you're not going to show up. They're not going to love that you're not going to watch your grandkids. They're not going to love that you're not going to hang out and, and study for the SATs. They're not always going to love that. And that's not your responsibility. So now we know where that comes from, right? That comes from fear of rejection, uh, fear of abandonment, fear of not being liked, uh, people pleasing. Like we know where those come from. And or, and or, um, let me do this so I can hold this in my back pocket. I helped you move three months ago. Make sure you help me move the next time. You know what I mean? We're not doing that. And so with your yeses, outside of just the rejection, the validation, the approval, 
you're going to feel this sense of obligation, right? And this is where you're going to have to really work on your self-esteem. Holler at your girl. I will work with you. We will work on this self-esteem and self-confidence because you will see and make sure that you're aware if you do this, you don't get to judge yourself, but make sure you're aware if you do this so you can prevent yourself from doing it in the future. Don't make anyone feel obligated. Well, but I live by myself. I mean, aren't you going to help me move? Um, okay, don't do not do that, right? Because now what you're doing is you're, you're trying to guilt somebody into doing it. And now you're going to say yes sometimes because you're going to be like, oh my God, okay, well, I don't want them to feel bad. Okay, so now you're falling into the trap of the manipulation cycle, where somebody is trying to guilt you into something. Could be your mother, could be your friend, could be your boss, could be the random person down the street. Doesn't matter who it is. They don't get a special free pass. So if you feel guilty by saying no, that is a, just like last week's episode, go back and listen to last week's episode on using your insecurities as a tool. There's a reason I put this one there after that one, because your insecurities are such a beacon of light for you on the areas that you still need to work in. So if you're insecure about hurting somebody's feelings, which you don't have the potential or capability to do that, you have actions, they assign that emotional attachment to it. And so what happens is you'll say yes, and then the whole time you're there, you're almost annoyed. You're almost like, oh God, okay, fine, I'm here. Because if I'm not here, because see, then the person knows your buttons. The person knows how to work it, and they know what it's going to look like for you. Okay, so they know that if I wear you down just enough as a, as a mom, as a person who has who's had children and you know how the kids are just go and go and go and go and you're almost like, oh, my God, just take the toy. Just you want to stay up till four o'clock in the morning. Just go ahead. Just shut up and just go ahead because it's wearing you down. So it's different as a mom, right? Because sometimes you just got to say stay up to four o'clock. But with these people who are trying to wear you down, that's why your boundaries are there. See, you can't let somebody continue to uh, kind of skirt around your boundaries. So I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, I am by now, if you've listened to this podcast, if you're new here, hi, welcome, love you. Um, but most of you have been with me for a while. And you know how my time is very, very precious, especially like what's left of my pool time or any other time like that. And you want to make sure that you know and that no one has this expectation that there's an open door policy, right? So, and most people know that, like all of my people really kind of know that. But let's pretend somebody didn't. Let's say you're new here and you said, oh, okay, I know that you don't want to people, but I mean, I'll just come over and I'm not going to talk to you. Yeah, you're still going to be in my presence. You're not going to work around my boundary, I don't want you to work around my boundary. I'm not going to allow that to happen. And you have to establish that. Uh, Let's say it's you and you want to go for a walk. And let's say you want to go for a hike by yourself. This is some, this is the time you've waited for. You waited all week. You had to deal with a bunch of people. You had to deal with a bunch of nonsense. And all you can think about is two solid hours of hiking alone. And your friend is having a breakup. Your friend has a breakup. And she's like, oh my God, I would love to go hiking with you. But now mind you, you can hike with her tomorrow, but today is not the day. So, okay, well, and you can plan something. Hey, okay, well, let's go hiking maybe next Saturday or let's Tuesday or tomorrow or whatever. I am really looking forward to this and I'm going to go hiking by myself today. It's literally okay to say that. Don't be guilted into that. But she may say, okay, let's pretend that she's going to be like, oh, okay, I hear you. My bad. But listen, I won't even talk to you. Let's just go hiking together. No. No. Like you're still there. Someone is still in my presence in my same atmosphere. People will try to skirt around it and it is up to you to hold your boundaries. But this is why, because you don't want to be like, oh my God, okay, so now I'm feeling guilty. Okay, she just broke up with somebody. Oh, fine. I guess I'll go by myself tomorrow. No, don't. No, 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 no. Go with her tomorrow. Go with her on Tuesday. Go with yourself today because this is what you've had planned. And it's super important that you hold steadfast to that because if not, you know how human beings work. I studied how human behavior works. And as human beings, and a lot of it is our just reptilian brain, our primitive brain, we all want what we want when we want it. Nobody really likes to be told no. Nobody really likes that until you get adapted to it. It doesn't bother me. You can tell me no. I'm like, okay, it's fine. Like, okay, I'm not going to waste time on it. So, The thing is, though, is it takes you time to get there. 
So when you don't get your way and then you put that expectation into that of, but you're my friend, like I want to go. And that's where you have to nip it in the butt. Listen, we can go tomorrow. I'm going by myself and I'm not going to have this discussion with you any further. And then you got to say, I'm hanging up. And then you hang up the phone and you go for your hike. See, you have to be stern. You don't have to give 87 reasons behind your no, right? Now, you may also say yes because you have this fear of confrontation, which we know is linked to lack of self-esteem, lack of self-confidence, right? So you're afraid to confront something, but just because you don't confront it doesn't mean that you're keeping the peace. Oh, you might be keeping the peace for that person. You are not keeping the peace for yourself, right? Because if you're walking around trying to make sure that this person's good, this person's good, and this person's good, there's no blanket for people being good. Because what works for you today and makes you really comfortable and happy today may not tomorrow. And then if the person does it, now you might be like annoyed with that person, but they're only repeating the same pattern that worked yesterday. And that's important for you. Because when you're constantly in the space of people pleasing, you're, it's going to be really difficult for you to say no, no. Or you're going to say no, and then you're going to make 87 reasons as to why you're no. Well, I can't because I'm really tired. And then I got to run to the grocery store. Okay, now I have your whole itinerary for the weekend. I just need to know if you're coming to the damn barbecue. Like, I just need to know how many burgers and buns, burgers and buns I need to get. I don't need your life story as to why you're not coming. And I'm not going to give you my life story as why I'm not coming. So if you're, you think it's you or you're insecure about it, I'm not going to coddle you with it. If I tell you no, then I'm not coming. Or if I tell you I'm not sure, then I'm really not sure. And I'll let you know, not on the 11th hour. But it's important that you understand that just because you don't want the confrontation, you are neglecting yourself. You keep saying that, you know, you feel empty and you feel stuck and you feel stale. You can get out of that. You are responsible for getting yourself out of that. Not Becky down the street, not the spouse, not the mom, not the best friend. No, they are the addition. And that's why you take stock of the people around you and say, are they encouraging? Are they educational? Are they inspirational? Are they providing me entertainment? If Uncle Billy is always at the house and all he is is a pain in the ass and he causes so much stress, why are you still going to deal with him? No, I'm not coming. And it's okay to ask somebody. I am the first person. If you say, having a party at the house, one of my first questions, whether I can come or not, is who's going to be there? Who is going to be there? Yep, I need to know that. Because it, it doesn't mean that I don't like somebody, but sometimes you ever meet those people, I mean, I'm a big energy myself, but you ever meet those big energy people that you're just like, holy shit, I just don't know if I have the mental bandwidth. You might want to see the other eight people that are there, but that one person is going to be enough to keep you from going there. It's okay to ask that question. And then when they go, this person, this person, this person, okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not coming. And that's okay. If they feel some kind of way about it, you don't need to negotiate it. And it's okay to say that because sometimes you just don't want to be around those people and you're allowed that. Sometimes you just don't even want to be around anybody. You're allowed that. And the more you try to explain your no and say yes to them, the more you're not even confident in your own no, right? Now, there's another reason why you say yes to a lot of things. FOMO, fear of missing out. Oh my God, I better say yes because I don't want them to not invite me again. So you're willing to go so tired, maybe hungover, maybe just out of it, and you're going to go because you don't want to miss out on something. Well, guess what? You're not going to do yourself any favors, and you're not going to do them any favors. Because let me be the first to tell you, energy does not lie. I don't care what's the words that are coming out of your mouth. I do not even care half the time about what your actions are. Your energy will speak volumes, okay? And so you have to remember that. Now, There's going to be a caveat and when I want you to say yes to everything, but it's not going to be with other people. It's going to be with yourself. And we'll talk about that here in a second, because right now we're talking about the no's. And you got to say no to those things that are not just an instant gratification. So if you have long-term goals and you might go, oh, that seems like so much fun. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, it's going to pull me a little. I mean, it's fine if you're taking a break. That's cool. But if you're doing it because you're afraid to miss out, but you know that it's pulling you further away from your goals, you're going to have to stop with that instant gratification and that immediate like, ooh, that immediate dopamine hit. It's not going to serve your best and highest good in any way, shape or form. Okay. Now we know about the people pleasing. 
And the more you say yes to them, again, the more resentful you will be, not just to them, but to yourself. Because now you go, why do I say yes to everything? I don't want to say yes to everything. Now you start getting mean to yourself. You're so stupid. You know better. Oh my God, you're an idiot. Now you start talking really bad about yourself. Never going to serve your best and highest good. As you're working on switching these yeses to no's, you're going to have to be compassionate with yourself because it's it's not like you're just going to listen to this podcast or have three sessions with me and then all of a sudden you're just the no master. I'm pretty much the no master. But like you're not going to get there and be there overnight. So you're going to have to understand. You're going to have to deal with the emotions of feeling guilty and deal with the emotions of like, oh, my God, what if they're mad at me? You're going to have to deal with those. They're not going to go away. I can't give you any tools to make them go away. I'm going to give you the tools to get you through them. You have to walk through the fire not around the fire. You want to avoid everything. If I avoid confrontation, nope, the gray elephant still exists. Well, if I avoid dealing with it, it's still there. It's still there. And then if you avoid dealing with it now, now you start to create what other people can expect from you. Now you're doing this. They're not doing it. They can have the expectations. You don't have to fulfill them. They they can have expectations all damn day. You do not have to <laughs> complete those expectations. But let's say every time that you're saying yes, and you don't want to, but every time, hey, can you do this? Can you watch kids? Yep. Hey, can you do it? Yep. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I guess I can. Okay. So now we're creating a pattern. So the moment that you say no, they're going to be like, which by the way, you have a right to, but they're going to be like, what, what, what's going on with you? You're being brand new. And you're going to face that because if you've been a yes person your entire life, the moment you start implementing these boundaries, oh boy, people are going to pull out all of the manipulation stops to try to make you feel bad, try to make you feel obligated, try to have confrontation, try to make you feel like, oh my God, why am I feeling selfish? Like they're going to try these things. It's up to you to not allow that to happen. And then you create the new pattern, the new expectation, the new sort of boundary and let's say regulation and rules on, on, on what you will and will not allow. Okay, now think about this too. On this yes journey for everybody else, how mentally draining is that? How mentally draining is having a full day's worth of work? Again, flexibility, yes. Somebody needs you and it's full on the 11th hour and it's a super emergent, yes. Again, exception, not rule. And somebody goes, oh my gosh, like I was hoping we could have happy hour. I haven't seen you in three weeks. Like, can we go for a happy hour today? And you're thinking, oh my God, I'm so tired. And they're like, come on, please. And you're like, okay, yeah, sure. Let me go home and change my clothes. And you get home and you're like, oh my God, look at the couch. Oh, the couch is calling my name. It just wants to talk to me and hold me and envelope me. Oh God, I'm going to go. Why are you doing that to yourself? Which by the way, you have every right to change your mind. You have every right to say, I changed my mind. But when you're in that people pleasing cycle, you're not going to change your mind. You're going to go, you're going to be tired you're going to sit there. Your eyes are going to be glazed over. You're going to be thinking, oh, my God, I'm so tired. And then she's going to be like, oh, my God, it's great. Let's do another shot. And you're like, okay, yay, this is not fun. Stop doing that to yourself. She'll be all right. Let her be disappointed. She's okay. She's okay. It's mentally draining. Okay, mentally draining. Now, again, we know that it's from insecurities. We know it's from fear of missing out. We know it's from fear of rejection, fear of abandonment. We all know that these are these open wounds. So every time you go into saying yes to something that you don't want to do or with someone you don't want to do it with, take a pause. I am the queen of saying, I'm not sure I will get back to you. Now, don't wait till the 10th hour and not get back to them. But don't respond immediately. Do not respond when you're happy. Do not respond when you're happy. Do not respond when you're sad. Do not respond when you're drinking. Do not respond when you're sober. You've got to take the pause. Hey, not sure. Let me get back to you. Now, you can say, hey, I'll get back to you next week. Or, hey, give me, I'll let you know. You know, but don't just leave it open-ended. Now, you might say, I really don't know. Like, now, if you know you're not going to do it, just say no. If you're like, I'm not going to do it, no. Because, see, people will catch you out there. They'll try to catch you out there. They'll be like, hey, girl, what you doing next week? And you're like, nothing. Why? Oh, good. I'm glad you're not doing anything. Really need your help moving. Great. Well, now, and you can say, no, I don't want to. You're absolutely allowed to. But your people-pleasing brain will be like, Fuck, okay, y yes, I guess I'm not. I guess I'm doing something now. You never respond with, I'm not doing anything. Ever, ever, ever. I'm not sure. Let me get back to you. Why? What's going on? 
Or, hey, what are you doing next week? I'm not entirely sure. Why? What you got in mind? Oh, I was just wondering if you weren't busy to kind of help me move. Well, I'm not sure. So let me check my calendar. I'll get back to you on Tuesday. Now, you know damn well you're going to go help this person move. For the most part, you probably won't. You might. And if you do, that's fine. If you're like, cool, I'll help you move. Let's go for mar- margaritas and lunch afterwards. Bang it. Like, do it. Let's do it. But don't put yourself in a position to have to commit to something by saying I'm not doing anything. Right? And don't always rush to say yes. Right? Again, and if you are, don't do anything with that. those expectations. Now, there's also a delay, a, a definite, a delayed, a definite uh, quality of relationships that deteriorate, a deterioration of friendships and relationships when there's expectations. We know this. So if you're always saying yes, even if they're good, you're going to be like, I don't want to answer the phone because every time I call this person, all they do is want something from me. They just want me to do something. They don't call me all four weeks in a row, but here they are. Hey, girl, can you let the dogs out? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. Like, you're like, uh, hi, like, how are you? You've allowed that behavior. They're not doing it. They're getting away with what they've gotten away with in the past. So you got to be clear and say, no, I'm not. No, I can't do it today. And that's it. No, 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 I'm not available. Oh, what you doing? Well, I'm not available. Oh, I mean, okay. You mean you couldn't go over there? Yeah, I'm not available. I'm not going to say that again. And if you ask me again, I'm just going to hang up the phone. Right? No is no. In every way, shape, or form, no is no. And you got to stop trying to worry about how they're going to feel. And oh my God, they're going to feel some kind of way. And they're not going to invite me anywhere. Well, then don't let them invite you anywhere. That's okay. If you want to go, you can say, hey, do you mind if I pop over? It's okay. Like it really is okay to be a little assertive. Because after a while, they like, My husband's family knows, and I love them. It's not like, oh my God, they're the in-laws from hell. And No, I love them. I do not do a lot of family functions. Most of my entire job is peopling. So a lot of times on my off time, I don't want to people. Now, sometimes I will, and sometimes I won't. But they're not stressing me about it. Hey, are you going to pop over? Nah, not this weekend. Okay, well, I'll catch you on the other side. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? They might come over the house or something if I ask them to. There's no balking. There's no expectation. Because they know from the door, I'm probably not going to go. So if I want to go and they don't invite me, I'll just go, hey, look who's popping in. Your girl's popping in. They're like, oh, my God, I'm glad you came. Yeah, after a while, they might stop inviting you. That's okay. If you want to go, then you go. Stop waiting for people to be the gatekeeper of what you're going to do. Okay? Now, I want you to say no to them, but I want you to say yes to you. Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. Don't care. Do it anyway. Oh my God, I'm a scared. I'm I'm a scared. I'm a scared. I'm scared to do this. Uh, No. Yes, you're going to do it. So when it comes to you, you say yes for you. That should be your default for yourself. Not, well, I don't know if I want to. No. Yes. When it comes to you, you say yes. Man, I want to start this new business. Okay. Well, let's see what we need to do. We know that there's going to be micro goals. We know we want to look at it and say, are we doing this for me? You know, for like for myself, or I'm doing this for other people. Why am I doing this? Oh, I'm doing it for myself. Okay, great. Nobody else has to understand that. Yes to you, not a lot of yeses to everything around you. Again, it can't always be no. So you are going to have to make, you know, pick and choose what you're going to sacrifice to. But if it's your peace, you're not going to sacrifice that. Sometimes doing things that you don't want to do. Hey, do you want to go out and you haven't been out in six months? Do you want to go out next Saturday? And you go, not really. I'd rather stay inside. Yeah, you can go do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do that. But you're doing it for you. You're not doing it to make them happy. You're doing it because if not, you will keep yourself in the corner. Baby will stay in a corner. Because you'll always find a reason to say no to yourself. I'm tired. I the, If I hear that excuse from anybody again, I'm just, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that excuse, I'd be rich right now. Seriously. Uh, you know, I'm just tired. Okay, so? I mean, obviously, you can't burn yourself out. Valid. Yes, you got to have break time. But you can't sit there and say you're not doing your journals because you're tired. You can't say you're not going to go show up to yourself and move your body a little bit and go for a walk because you're tired. This can't be your go-to because you're constantly saying no to you. Now, that will stop being so much of a no to self when you start saying no to other people. Seriously. Because now, you know the beautiful thing with that is, oh my God, now 
your relationships get better because the quality of time that you're spending with somebody is there. Like you're showing up because you're like, yes, this is something I want to do. This is, this is what I want to do. So you do it and you show up and you're there. Don't stay on your phone all day long. Don't be halfway there. Be all the way there. And that will happen when you're not saying yes to everything. Because you say yes to everything, you're exhausted. You're mentally drained. You're annoyed. You're physically drained. And saying yes to everything causes an enormous amount of stress. And stress is not just phys- uh, mental. It is also physical. It will break your body down. And if you're worried about trying to please everybody and trying to get there and yesing them to death, it's going to make you sick. Like, literally. All right. So you got to ask yourself, what do I deserve? Like, what do I deserve? What does my tomorrow self deserve? Well, I deserve some peace. I deserve um, allowing myself to, to have space. I deserve to do what makes me happy. I deserve and they deserve for me to show up when I show up and be 100% there and be there because I know I want to be there. Not showing up to Thanksgiving because you feel obligated to show up to Thanksgiving. Don't do not show up to Thanksgiving because you're obligated. You will never like that holiday. And do yourself a favor. Make plans. Go away with your 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 friends, your partners. Make it a, a thanksmas. Make it something. Something. Friendsgiving. Doesn't matter. You don't have to do what everybody else wants you to do. Flexibility? Yes. Putting yourself on the back burner? No. So that happy medium, you're going to have to find that through trial and error. But you're going to have to be okay with people being upset. Be okay being the the villain in everybody's story. And don't give a thesis. I don't care why you're not coming to the barbecue. I don't care if you say, I don't want to, and I want to sit on the couch and watch Netflix all day long. Fine. I don't care why you're not coming. Just tell me you're not coming so I know not to buy burgers and buns. And if you, you know, so I don't care if you're going to go take somebody to soccer or if you're going to sit down and sleep all day. I don't care what your answer is. No is no. And you got to get there too. Everybody does not need to give you 800 reasons as to why. Because it's going to create a problem. Because if you don't like the answer as to why they don't want to come or why they're not coming, ooh, now you're going to get your feelings hurt. Now you're going to get salty. Now you're going to get mad. Oh, what do you mean you're going to watch Netflix? You watch Netflix anytime. Now you start negotiating. Well, why can't they come? Why do you have the expectation for them to come? Put it back on yourself, right? You cannot change people. People change, but you cannot change people. And it's important that you get that. But you can change how you respond to things. So the next time you feel the instant need to say yes, take a pause. Say, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. When the guilt kicks in, when all these other insecurities kick in, utilize those so you know where to work on it. If you need help there, I got you. You know, all you got to do is reach out to me. I got you and we'll work on it. But start saying no to everybody else. Check it out.